I am about to get started with my Hyperflex install. So what I have here is UCS Manager. If I click on Equipment, you will see that I have my Fabric Interconnects FI A connected with four servers, one through four, and I have an uplink as well. And if I click on B, same thing. If I click on a server, they are all HX servers here, two forties. Hybrid display will show you the connections between the 240 gig ports up to the interconnect. So here is the Hyperflex installer. So if I click on create cluster, I have three options, standard, edge, or stretch. Once I select standard cluster, I have an option to input my UCS manager and vCenter IP addresses and credentials. You can also use fully qualified domain names as long as the DNS entries are configured properly. So once I'm done with inputting this information and I hit continue, the installer script is going to validate and make sure that I'm able, it's able to pull in the information from both vCenter as well as UCS manager. So let's hit continue. Now it will take a second to log into UCS Manager and pull the information. So here are the four servers. It shows you that it's unassociated and the model number and the serial number as well. It'll continue. And this this phase of the installer script um, is basically asking us for some VLAN configurations. So as long as we have uh, the appropriate VLANs configured. We do not need to configure these VLANs on UCS Manager just as long as you know which VLANs are for um, in-band management, storage data, vMotion as well as uh, the VM network uh, which is your virtual machine network. And for the Mac pool just add a unique ID uh, to make it separate and then for the external management IP range for Cisco IMC is for the KVM portion of it. So there are two options obviously. You can use the out of band, which means you're going to be using the same IP range as the IP address of the UCS manager, or the in band, which would be you know, one of these VLANs that you've created, uh, specifically um, the VLAN for management. So in my case, I'm using the dot 36 VLAN. As far as the uh, under advanced tab, now this is UCS specific. So you will create a cluster name and org name, and this would actually show up. The org name would show up in UCS Manager as a suborg. And all the UCS Manager settings, all the settings for pools, policies, etc., would be part of uh, the suborganization. Alright, so let's continue to the next screen. Okay, so here you're talking about uh, some settings in terms of the hypervisor itself, the IP addresses. So give your uh, give the subnet mask and the default gateway IP for your hypervisor. Okay, in terms of the credentials themselves, if you did not modify the ESXi credentials, leave it the default here, especially if you had downloaded it from cisco.com, uh, specifically from the HX download page. Now this is going to be your new password um, that you want the hypervisor to be. So the script, install script will change the password to this new password. Once all these settings look good, you can go ahead and hit continue. 
Now, this next page here gives you a list of different IP addresses that you need to put in. So there are two VLANs. Uh, the VLANs on the left side, as you can see, is VLAN 40. This has to be in the same range as the VLAN for the hypervisor that you put in earlier. And a storage controller is basically a virtual machine that spins up. Um, well, it will ha the VM will have a leg on this VLAN. And then for the data VLAN, you have to pick a different IP range um, for the VM to communicate in that specific network. Make sure you put the cluster IP address which is going to be a uh, management IP this is where your HX cluster lives uh, should be on, on the same VLAN as VLAN uh, 40 in my case and then do the same thing for the data VLAN as well All right, this next screen now you're configuring the HX uh, cluster name Replication factor, you pick your replication factor. Three is for maximum redundancy. The controller VM is going to be the password for the controller VM, of course. And then you want to create the vCenter data center name and a vCenter cluster name. Now, you want to do is give the DNS. NTP server and a DNS domain name. Now the NTP is very critical because you want to make sure that it's synchronized between all the nodes and the vCenter itself. Change your time zone and under advanced configuration make sure jumbo frames are enabled. You want to make sure that your upstream switch is also configured with jumbo frame. Later down in the video I'll show you how to do that. I have a 90 to 160 Nexus 90 to 160 that I'll show you how to do that. So once you verify everything what you want to do is you want to create a backup of this so before you hit start uh, you would download this configuration as a JSON file once you have the JSON file downloaded uh, you can hit start and the reason why you want to download the JSON file is that if you ever want to go back and either look at the config or redeploy it with the same configuration you are able to do that so you click on the far left item and then you uh, the down the down arrow and then you hit save and you have saved your JSON file there it is and it will create uh, the JSON file based on the cluster name hit start and the process begins now most of the rest of the configuration should be all automated unless you run into any sort of an error as you can see I have run into an error here it's actually a VLAN configuration error using during UCSM configuration now as you can see what have happened is that it's created uh, two VLAN 36s. Uh, as you know, with UCS, the VLANs can be repeated uh, because the unique identification is based on the VLAN name, not the VLAN number. So I can create multiple VLAN 36s. In any case, I have deleted uh, one of the VLAN 36s that the script created because I had manually created my own VLAN 36, which is how I manage and how I can how I log into UCS Manager. The real problem was right here. The the VM networks I had a comma and two VLANs I think there was a there's a bug in this uh, version uh, it did not create VLAN 39 it only created VLAN 36 and the error that I received in the installer was something to do with unable to create VLAN 39 so now that we have made this change we can hit continue and continue again and one more time and hit start and we can just restart the process where we left off so retry UCSM configuration and the rest of the process again hopefully should be error free and uh, I will fast forward the video to get to a point where there's any issues or errors so as I speed through the process one of the things I will do during the UCS manager configuration here is uh, to really log into UCS manager and see what the installer is doing 
whether it's creating these Mac pools, this configuration of the quality of service classes, etc. So I recommend you know something to double check so that uh, we understand the process of what is going on behind the scenes. So here I'm looking at my servers. I'm looking at my service profiles just to make sure that it has created the service profiles, which it has. There's four service profiles. And what I will also do is I'll actually pick a server and go to the FSM tab, finite state machine, to take a look at what's going on. And then you can KVM into it to see if it's stuck somewhere. So here I'm KVM into one of them. This is the uh, PNOS um, operating system, the self configuration system of UCS, where we pixie boot a uh, tiny operating system to make any changes onto the actual server itself from a firmware, BIOS setting, etc. Uh, so, this gives you some kind of background information in terms of what's going on during the installation process. Sometimes, what happens is the installer just stays stuck at a screen and while you know you don't know what's going on this is a, a way of coming back and taking a look at uh, what exactly is happening behind the scenes to make sure that the process is not stuck so now it's actually installing the ASXI server um, as you can see uh, this actually is, uh, uh, is not a linear process all four servers are simultaneously being configured so depending upon where your virtual media is it might be a little bit slow so here are my server, ESXi server is going to come up in a minute and what you will notice is that it actually is going to try to get a, an IP address from DHCP but it will not because there is no DHCP configured here. It might go through a reboot process a couple of times because there is a unattended script that um, we run to make certain changes. So once um, all that is taken care of then ESXi will come back up with um, waiting for configuration. Now, the way the script works is that it's able to uh, connect to the ESXi console using SOL, serial over LAN, and it's able to change, an, uh, change the IP and put a uh, name, ESX, uh, a host name that you have configured previously in the script. So that's what you saw a second ago where uh, there's a quick screenshot of an IP address being configured and a host name set up for the ESXi cluster of our ESXi host itself. This stage of the process is actually creating the controller VM. So it's actually logging onto ESXi server and uh, standing up that VM, installing the VM, configuring all the network settings for that, etc. So that virtual machine is a storage controller virtual machine. As you can see, all my four hosts are being configured with this setting right now and the process keeps moving along uh, without any hiccups and once um, you know it's done with creating the ESXi settings now it will actually log on to vCenter which is the final process and uh, create the ESXi cluster create the uh, add the hosts to the cluster uh, it, it does some final configuration changes uh, to make sure that everything is working. It will create all the networks, you know, all the switching, configure your services properly, NTP for example in this case. Once all these processes are completed, um, you will have the cluster up and running.